What's going on everyone? My name is Brian Turner. I'm the founder and the director of training at No Stress Midwest. Uh, what I've got here is a player role and responsibility PowerPoint that I've come up with. Essentially, we have created a uh, PowerPoint that goes over the five basic formations, uh, 1442, 443, 343, 352, and the 451. And what excuse me, and what we're doing is breaking down um, how to play in that formation, starting from the forwards, center mids, defenders, looking at the different thirds of the field and the attacking, the middle, and the defensive third, as well as your primary connections and roles. Okay, so overall, we're going to start with the 442 using a diamond center mid. Now, once again, all of this is just one way of going about it. You can have a center mid of a box with two sixes and two eights. Um, you can keep the diamond. You can have two center mids and two wide mids. It's going to be whatever your choice is. In this case, we're using a 442 diamond center mids. Okay, so the first part of this, we're going to be looking at the forwards in the attacking aspect um, of the game. All right, our primary uh, positions are going to be our nine and our 11. Now, in the attacking third, it's very simple. Forwards, their goal is to score goals. So that's going to be one of our main uh, goals. They're also gonna be looking to combine with center mids here to create uh, 2v1s and outnumber the opponent, opponent uh, to create some goal scoring chances. So if we look over here in this smaller area um, on this whiteboard, we have our forwards, in the attacking third of the field where the blue team going down, we can look at if one of our forwards have, has the ball here. Let's see, how are we gonna do this one? This is not a false nine. This is not a false nine, so they're gonna be playing together, that's all. So if we look over here in this smaller part of the field, we have our forwards in the attacking third with our blue team going down, which is our primary focus team, the red being the opponent. Right now we're playing with two forwards that are working together, and then we have our four center mids here. As we look, we're going to be going up against the 4-3-3 formation with all of this. So we look to first outnumber our center mids right here with, three, uh, with four on three. Our two forwards are finding sweet spots in between the wing back and full back to play together and create opportunities and outnumber the opponent in 2v1s throughout the field. Whether they come on this side and we can drag them out there. By doing that and even bringing our two forwards out, it opens up this middle of the field here by taking these two defenders out where now we have that 10 that can come in and add some extra numbers to that open space. Okay, in the middle third, in the middle third of the field, uh, we wanna make sure we're staying connected um, and having one forward check down, one forward going over the top. So in this case, if we move to this part of the field and we have the ball with our two forwards up, By having our forwards here, attacking here, and we have our center mid with the ball, when, when we're looking to break lines and go into the attacking third from this middle third area, we can have one forward checking down to receive a pass or a ball at their foot, dragging this defender out. And at the same time, we're having our other forward run over the top and then look for that to be an option, bringing either their full uh, center back or their wing back into that space. And same with if we're going on this side, and maybe we have the ball here on our, with our eight, we can have this person check down, or even this forward check down, look to receive a ball here, have this person look to play into that space, and then we can move into the attacking third from there. Excuse me. And then finally in the defensive third, we just wanna make sure that we're staying high 
uh, and just creating those 2v1 opportunities when possible. So if the ball is back here in our defensive third, That's our nine, one, two, three. There we go. And if we have this ball here, we're looking for these two. The balls on the right side will have these two staying together so they can move. Boom. Check that way and come out in this space. Or if the ball swings along this side, drops back here, our two forwards are going to be moving over. Obviously, as we said, have one person checking down, the other person checking over the top. And what I've done here is when I've, I've highlighted our primary and secondary connection of players. So with our four words that are highlighted, our primary players are going to be that 10 and then the strong side eight um, on for our forward, right? And then our second or our secondary is going to be that six, which is always going to serve as that pivot as well as the strong side wing back. Okay, now what we're doing is looking at the same uh, positions, our forwards, but now we're looking at a different aspect, uh, part of the game, which is the defending side of it. So when we're in the attacking third, we're working together to try to keep the ball on one side of the field. So. So if the opposing team has the ball and they're playing out of the back, let's say they find our fullback here, he looks to play out here. As that ball gets played over, we're having our forwards work together to try to shade that ball to this side of the field. So as one forward's coming down here to try to keep that ball back, this forward will be checking in here to try to block off this option as a back pass to the fullback and to try to block off the keeper. Now, obviously he can't be in two places at once, so he needs to make a decision on what's gonna be the biggest threat or which ball will get, that, get them out of pressure. If that ball swings back and then starts to come over here to this side, now these forwards are just coming over, boom, sliding over, trying to apply that pressure, look to engage in that pass, and then as it goes, just trying to keep them to this one side of the field so our center mids can then block off their center mids, step up on the open man, and then we look to just force a long ball in. Okay, um, as I said, we want to make sure that when they're working together um, as a unit, they're denying that full field switch if possible. In the middle third, once again, we're denying that back pass to the opposition wing back uh, as well as applying pressure on their center mids if possible and if they have a, a deep holding six um, that's coming back. And then the defensive third, just strong side forward is always going to be uh, denying the back pass to that strong or to that side's uh, wing back just to make sure that they can't use that as a pivot to get the ball to the other side of the field. All right, now what we're going to do is transition to our center mid positions, okay? And then once again, in the 4-4-2 and the way that I'm going about it, we're playing with the diamond center mid, having a six. In this case, it's the number seven, but it could serve as two eights, if you will. And then you have the 10 at the point of the diamond. Um, as you can see by our connections, they're connected to everyone on the field, primary for a lot of them and secondary for the rest. Um, the center mids are so important in this aspect, running the 4-4-2, because they should, um, when going up against the 4-3-3, always have that numerical advantage. And if smart and they understand each other's roles and responsibilities, are really able to carve through center mids and open up the game a lot more for the forwards and for the wing backs that maybe want to get into uh, the play. Okay. So we're going to start with our 10 in the attacking phase of the game. 
All right, and in the attacking third, what we're looking to do is find um, numerical advantages that they can create with the forwards uh, just so we can try to create 2v1s, even some 3v1 opportunities, uh, which ultimately lead to goal scoring chances. In the middle third, we're just finding forwards checking down to the feed, as we talked about, or also the forward going over the top that we can play into space uh, and break lines behind the defense uh, into the attacking third. And then in defensive third, we're just looking to find space to serve outlet passes um, and create and connect with those center mids to create some 2v1s. So if we have the ball here and we're looking at our 10 right here, um, and here in the middle third, right, they're going to be looking to find space, whether they have the ball or not, looking to kind of break away from this six. Since there is a numerical advantage, the opposition will be trying to, uh, are going to constantly be moving around if, they're, if our center mids are moving around, trying to mark them up, which should lead to someone, hopefully in this case, the 10 getting open. And now we can transition and look to find that forward checking down, that forward going over the top, vice versa, looking at things in that regard. Now what we're going to do is focus on the attacking center mid or the 10 uh, in the defending aspect or phase of the game. Uh, while in the attacking third, looking to deny service into the opposition CDM uh, or in the checking center mid. So if the ball is with the opposition here, and we have the three center mids for the opposition. If that six is checking in, we want that 10 to be the first person to, to stop this, to deny that pass. If then that six checks out and the eight comes in, if that 10 is still able to get there, deny that pass as well if the eight's not able to help. But we just wanna make sure that here, we're denying that first pass or that first ball into a center mid that's checking in and if this one opens up, then we can adjust as well. In the middle third, we want to deny the ball into the CDM to avoid switching of the fields. As we were kind of talking about, if that ball is moved up, we want to, that ball is moved up here and they're looking to, to play in, let's see, there's the six. Let's say the ball here, sorry, balls here is at a center mid. We want to try to deny this pass to the six for them to switch the field that way. So we want to make sure we're up here and just forcing that ball out, seeing if the forwards can do their part and everyone else. But we want to try to eliminate that ball going back to the opposition pivot. Um, or if it does make it there, at least try to get here and deny the ball, being able to switch fields and force them back the opposite way into pressure. And then in the defensive third, we just want to deny balls back to the center backs um, and just look to outnumber the opponent when possible. Our primary player connections for the 10 is sitting right underneath of the 9. Um, the 9 and 11 kind of splitting them as they're moving together. Having your strong side center mids or your eights there to the sides of you. And then having your six or that pivot underneath of you. Okay, now we're going to look at our two eights uh, or the two wide people in the center mids. Um, we're going to look at, look at the primary connections of the forwards. They're, so our two center mids, their primary connections are going to be strong side forwards as well as the strong side wing backs keeping that 10 and 6 um, there as well. Secondary will be those fullbacks um, playing underneath the view. All right, so in the attacking third, we're looking to combine with the 10 as well as our two uh, forwards to try to create some numerical advantages. In the middle third, we're looking to find one of those center mids, whether it's you or the other three, to get open to receive that pass as we're going up against a three center mid system. Um, and then in the defensive third, once again, while in the attacking phase of the game, is just pass and move and learn how to create space and get out of trouble. All right, now on the defending role of that or the defending phase of the game, 
Uh, while we're in the attacking third, we're looking to deny service into the two other center mids, which is going to hopefully leave our six open to help our fullbacks with the nine. So we'll have our two eights denying the eight opposition eight and ten the ball. And then we have our six helping out or our ten helping out denying the opposition CDM. In the middle third, we're going to be looking to deny service to the opposition center mid. Um, and in this very crucial that in this case, for this to work, these four center mids need to be making sure that the other three center mids are always marked off. Whoever is going to be the open center mid, depending on what phase and what part of the field you're in, could be the 10, it could be the 6, could be either, either 8s as well. Um, but that's where communication comes into play. And then the defensive third, we just want to once again make sure we're marking out opposition, attacking center mids and CDMs, making sure that they don't have uh, a way to play the ball back to them and switch the field. And with our final center mid, we are dealing with the CDM, our number six. Uh, in the attacking phase of the game, in the attacking third of the field, they serve as an outlet or that pivot to switch the ball from one side of the field to the other, looking to find either penetrating passes to break lines to get to the next level or just swing it to, the, um, to one of our wing backs so we can get the ball forward. What's so important about them is that they're always sitting in the pocket or in this right space, as you will, looking like they're not doing too much work, which shows that um, they're actually really smart and thinking ahead of the game seeing where the ball is going to come, different ideas and patterns, so they can get the ball from one side of the field to the other. Um, in the middle third, they're going to be looking to find uh, center mids to break line, as well as the forwards checking in if need be, and then that forward going over the top so we can play that ball there. And then the offensive third, just checking back into space. Can go here. If we have the ball down here, let's say our keeper has it, we have the opposition nine or two center backs. That six can check back here in the space to try to receive that. If the forwards are maybe marking up the, the uh, opposition or marking up our full backs. And then, and then um, they also serve as a connection between that center back, outside backs as well, okay? For our primary connections, our six is connected to all of our center mids in a primary way, as well as our defensive back line with secondary connections going in at our forwards. All right. And then in the defensive aspect of the game, just denying service uh, to the opposition nine, letting the other three center mids mark. So as we were saying, if we're up here in the attacking third, defending, we'll have our three center mids, one, two, three, um, of our two eights and our ten. marking out their three center mids and then that leaves now our six being able to help out with our center backs and kind of add pressure and deny the opposition nine the ball and now that just can create a higher line for us almost serving as a stopper role um, in between our two uh, center backs. In the middle third, we're working with our center backs and center mids to deny service to that nine and to that 10. As the ball comes further down and we move from this middle third into our defensive third, now that six, as that nine drops in a little more, that six will then free up, try to mark up on that 10 that's now incoming, pass the opposition nine onto one of our center backs, thus leaving open another center mid and it's just denying the next man uh, who's going to be the biggest threat, the ball there. Now we've gotten to our defenders. Um, last but not least, uh, in this case, our numbers are going to be two, three, four, and five. And 
um, with this role. This is coming from U.S. Soccer numbers. Um, nicknames, backs, center backs, outside backs, back line, full backs, basically anything with the back in it is going to be what we refer to uh, as our defenders. And in the main, um, with all, dealing with all four defenders, what we're going to be dealing with in the attacking part, uh, some of the main responsibility of their first level of attack when playing out of a defensive third. A lot of times we have this stigma that forwards only play, uh, only attack and don't defend. Defenders never attack and only defend. Um, I look at it that if we don't have the ball, everybody's a defender. If we do have the ball, everyone becomes an attacker. So depending on what part of the field we're in, um, in this case, starting the defensive third, they are considered our first attackers as they're trying to get the ball from one third of the field into the middle and attacking. Um, and then on the defending aspect of the game, they are the final barrier before the keeper. So the first thing how I look to, to coach my team is to tell that first defender to delay the counterattack. Okay, we want to get there, get somebody in front of it. So we want to delay that um, so we can then get another uh, defender, or another center mid, someone on our team to help in a double sense. Um, but we also we want to deny goal scoring opportunities cre and uh, from the opposition, right? Well, that's what it comes down to when we're dealing with defenders. Uh, so as we are becoming, uh, getting more into our defensive third, so as plays coming from up here, coming down here, our, our um, defenders will start off wide. And as we move closer to our goal, start to compact. And we want to get really tight there to make sure that we serve as that kind of fortress um, to deny those shots and to deny little through balls in. And as we get the ball from our defensive third and we transition into the attacking phase of the game, then we want to get wide, try and create space, spread out and keep things going that way. Um, another important aspect is working with our CDM to make sure that the opposition nine is marked up. As we kind of talked about with the center mids earlier, um, as that first uh, forward comes back, we're gonna really look for our six or CDM to mark that person. Once the play comes more and more and deeper into our defensive third, then they're going to have to pass off that nine to our opposition or to our defenders or center backs and then look to pick up on the 10 or the next biggest threat. Okay, so we're going to start with our center backs in the attacking phase of the game. Um, in the attacking third, the ball side center back or strong side uh, is set up into the attack as a far outlet pass uh, while the other drops off as the last defender. So in that case, the higher we move up, the higher we move up the field into the attacking third, whichever is the strong side, if the ball is on, let's say our right side with the forward, we'll have this one step up and this one slide in almost serving as now a sweeper and a stopper roll. That ball gets swung over here to this side. Maybe even we play our wing back coming in, then we'll just transition, boom, they'll step up and then they'll slide down. So they're ma we're making sure that our two center backs are never on the same line. There's always going to be some depth between the two. Um, while we're in the middle third, we're looking to find the open center mid in build-up play. Um, as, I'm sta as I've stated before, we have that numerical advantage of four center mids against the three. So it's going to be really crucial that those center backs have the ability to look and find out a pass uh, and find that open center mid. Uh, and also trying to work with our forwards as well um, as one's checking down to maybe skip lines and play, that, play the forward checking down feet or dump that ball over the top behind the back line. Uh, and in the defensive third, as I said, we're going to look to find that CDM or other center mids to break lines from our defensive third 
into the middle third, as well as looking to find our outside uh, backs getting involved in the attack that way. Primary connections, of course, are going to be our two wing backs and going to be um, our six and our two eight center mids as primary with our secondary then being the attacking center mid. Now in the defending aspect of that, um, of the attacking third center back should be staggered as I was saying uh, with the ball side center back staying higher on the field and the other one dropping off almost um, kind of keeping that nine in between the two or in front of that uh, stepped up center back. Um, and we must deny service, delay that counterattack. So with delaying the counterattack, it's having someone um, there to slow down the play, but also understanding that a defensive win is not necessarily a tackle or winning the ball back. It's denying and slowing down the play and forcing that person to then pass the ball backwards or to someone uh, that slows down the uh, op or that slows down the counterattack even more. In the middle third, we're looking to communicate communicate with the CDMs to make sure opposition players are all being marked. Um, you know, it's very crucial the defenders are able, unlike or other than the goalie, are able to see most of the field. So it's very important that you have center backs that not only understand and can analyze, but are vocal and can help their center mids and other teammates uh, see maybe what they can't see. And then the defensive third, making sure that opposition nine is marked. Um, and as I said, do not be on the same line. We always want to make sure that there's a little bit of staggered um, in between our two fullbacks there. Okay, now we're in the outside backs, which is going to be our two and three. In the attacking third, they're adding that wide support on the ball side. So if we move over here to the board... Let's say we have one of our center mids. One of our center mids and we're dribbling the ball and we have some space. This now outside back can look to get up here, creating uh, two V2s, right? Or one V1 scenarios. And as they can move forward, if they're able to make runs in, that just serves as an extra attacker to put that ball in as well as vice versa if we get the ball and we are looking to go forward here, always having someone being on that backside to make that run, making that back post run there. In the middle third, we're going to uh, provide width to open up that middle channel some, right? We want to have the center mids have enough space where they can work, but then also create that width to really make that field wide so we have that space that even opens up for our forwards, making it really difficult for the strong side opposition center back and wing back, um, making them feel a little uncomfortable having to decide which man are we going to go mark maybe pulling them out a little further than they're comfortable. In the defensive third, that ball side outside back uh, is going to get wide into the open space um, and become that outlet pass. Now, as we've looked at the primary and secondary connections, if we're looking at this out, uh, outside back, our one primary is going to be our same side center back, as well as that forward that's going to be on our side with the same side center mid as well, and the six being our primary, that 10 will be a secondary, and vice versa with the other outside back. In the attacking third, what we when we're looking at our outside backs, we wanna to look to deny service to the opposition wide players um, and watch that ball that's played over the top into space. So when we're here in the attacking third and the opposition has the ball, let's say it's out here, with the wing back, maybe our forwards didn't do a good job of, of denying the ball out here. We want to make sure that we're watching this ball that gets dumped back here, uh, having a good communication with our strong side 
center back here knowing that maybe if we drop this one can step or if we run with this man we have that safety support back here but we want to try to make sure that that ball does not get dumped over behind us in this space where we're in a 1v1 uh, situation. In the middle third, deny service to that opposition wide players, working with the same side center back to just have that secondary cover, right? This first person here on a counter attack or on the attack, this first person's job is going to be to delay delay this attack as long as possible while we're delaying we're having our secondary help which is our strong side center back come in and then we have that tertiary or that opposition or, or the other center back coming in for support and then we have our balance of our uh, weak side outside back in this case um, so if we do when we do win the ball we're able to have some support and there's multiple lines that must be broken in order for that opposition to get a goal scoring chance or get close to goal. In the defensive third, we want to work with our center backs to get compact uh, and mark out the biggest threat. Um, and if caught in a 2v1 or 1v1 scenario, we always just want to delay, delay, delay and uh, wait for help or force the back pass. Once again, a defensive win is not always a slide tackle or winning the ball back. It's just delaying and denying an opportunity for the opp opposition to score goals. All right, for goalkeepers, when we're looking at the attacking aspect of the game, in that attacking third, they're gonna be between the 18 yard box at the top of there and in between midfield, right? We really wanna make sure That if there is a long ball that just happens to get dumped down in, that we're not stuck inside our box here. We're able to come out and make a play on that ball if need be before the opposition gets there and, and not having our center back get into a foot race for 30 yards to try to get to that ball. And then in the middle third, we want to stay between the top of the 18-yard box and the top of the D area. So as we kind of move into this middle third area, and let's say the opposition has it, we're gonna be looking to back up into our box a little more. And then as we get more into the defensive third, we'll be back into our six yard box. On the defending aspect of it, right? Same uh, positions um, for our goalie. We just want to make sure that once again, we're not too far back into our box where we're not able to impact the game if there is a long ball that comes out and that we're not completely disconnected from the rest of play. Thank you for, for watching uh, and, and listening through this. Hopefully you were able to follow along um, on the whiteboard as well as through the PowerPoint and that it made sense. Uh, we will be uh, making a few more of these videos for all of the formations coming out here in some time. If you like, please subscribe, reach out, and we can chat some more about it. Cheers.